Hey guys, welcome to another commentary done by Digby. This is going to be game two between Jayun and Oblivion. And Oblivion, ha again, has his work cut out for him. Bottom right hand corner as the yellow Zerg. Upper left hand corner, we have Jayun as the white Protoss. This is going to be on Allegro, which for a while I thought was just, you know, kind of a standard map. But I have realized it is called Allegro because it has much closer, it's hard to tell on the mini map. And if you're not like a uh, deep ladder player, which I am not that the rush locations between spawns and even cross position is shorter than pre than comparative maps. Hence Allegro. Also, hence comparative, I think, to Largo, where there was, I think, a longer rush distance between locations. So this, in theory, is more, you know, Allegro, fast pace. We'll see if that actually ends up being the case. And actually, come to think of it, that might, on the sly, end up benefiting Protoss, because what the closer... Well, let me think about this. So let's talk about the, the benefits and the harms and benefits. You can get a little bit of an earlier scout to the four locations to know whether you can sneak out a faster Nexus versus Cannons as Protoss. But at the same time, if there's an overpool start at the closer rush positions, it doesn't necessarily mean you can pull it off as compared to a map like Polypoid Fighting Spirit. It looks like we are going to see Spawning Pool Extractor here, maybe to capitalize on that. Jane is going to fact see it, but then also, as far as follow-ups, 973, or 9734 even, like being able to get Hydralisks in position to contain happens much more rapidly. Jane sending out that second probe with that forge down, again to try to get that quick scouting information. So, I'm not sure. We'll have to, maybe I'll look up the map statistics in between games. Initial six Zerglings are being produced. Jayun is, in fact, going to see it. And he's going to hang around with this probe just to make sure. Dropping that cannon, I am sure, preventatively. No, is he going to go gateway first? Okay, no. He's going to go back, drop that cannon. This should warrant two cannons. There's the two cannons now. But let's see. Yeah, he's going to hold that probe at the ramp to make absolutely sure that it was Zerglings and not, dro uh, not drones. So he could have canceled, but needs to keep that probe alive. That's kind of another thing that is important. So dead, and what that does open up is Oblivion. No, he's just gonna go pure Zergling. I was gonna say maybe he could go ahead and drop a natural expansion. It looks like Jayun's not that worried about losing that probe, maybe because he's gonna try to hide this drone. Oblivion, yeah, I think rather than going, he doesn't even know what spawn to attack right now. So right now sending the Zerglings bottom left. The cannons are already warped in, however. So Jayun is safe to go ahead and drop that Nexus. But the critical thing for Oblivion now is as a follow-up. Oblivion, is he just going to go? Yeah, he's just going to go all on Zerglings and try to abuse that close rush distance. It, as soon as this probe sneaks out and confirms that at the natural expansion there's no base, he will know that it's all in Zergling and will be able to adjust accordingly with either additional cannons or something along those lines. But looks like it's going to be one base layer. Wow. So Oblivion, let's see what he's up to. Zerglings trying to press through the initial probe line. That is a lot of Zerglings few of them sneaking through. It looks like one of them getting through. The rest have died. But only a single Zergling is going to have trouble against probes. Because honestly, yeah, you can see with that, that's the thing. Jayun has a lot of APM. Now wandering up. Sees that there's no natural expansion and sees the lair. Now let's see, is it going to be a Hydrolisten or a Spire? I think this might be an attempt at one base Spire play. In the meantime, that Zergling cleaned up, getting bullied by probes, which you don't often see happen to Zerglings. The probe not able to confirm. It looks like it is going to be one base Spire. Let's see if Jayun's got the answer for it. He's got a 7x core already warping in. This is going to be very fast Mutalisks, but keep in mind it will be at much smaller numbers than usual. If Jayun, if Jayun holds, he will have the superior economy overall. One's out holding the line, second's out being produced. Probe moving up to go ahead and blockade. A lot of Zerglings have already died, sacrificed their lives for the cause. Spire at one third. Overlord taking some damage. Seven X core finished. And they say you want your Spire to drop by the time the uh, Stargate is halfway. We'll see if it's just a cannon defense for Jayun. In between, he is producing a Dragoon to go ahead and deal with this. It has been quite some time since I've seen one base. I'm trying to think the last time. It's been years. 
since the last time I saw one base layer into Mutalisk play. It can be very, very effective, especially if your opponent doesn't prepare for it, but I think Jaehyun, being the caliber of player he is, should be prepared. Dropping a pylon now at both locations, I think that's just to go ahead and get... If he gets two cannons at either location, that should be sufficient. Overlord also down, that's... Oh, that's terrible. Mutalisks are being built, but that's also going to slow down the follow-up. And starting to move out with that Zealot and the Dragoon to pressure, realizing there's not additional Zerglings and that all the larva, and keep in mind, larva is going to be small at this stage. All the larva is going to be in Mutalisks, which means these Mutalisks may need to engage the Dragoon and the Zealots, which also buys time for Jayun. It looks like the Mutalisks are actually in flight. This cannon, I don't know if that's going to be in time. So might be able to get some kills here. One cannon in the main. I thought actually two cannons would be the, the full safety net to close this out, but one cannon might be sufficient. I'm going to trust Jayun on this. But the cannon not going to be there quite in time as the Mutalisks are diving in. So they are going to be able to get probe kills. It'll warp in, but maybe get a shot or two off. Another cannon warping in, some Dragoons moving out to go ahead and support this. So yeah, the cannon actually canceled last second. And the Dragoons trying to, yeah, force these Mutalisks back to the cannon line. I'm not sure what happened to the attack troops that were out on the field for Jayun. I'm going to assume they just died somewhere out there, or maybe they returned to home base. I think they turned around and made it back to home base, but Oblivion able to get some kills here. The problem with this is he was able to strike blood, but he was not able to do sufficient damage. Now the two cannons in place at both locations. One cannon here, and the Dragoon's migrating should be able to provide the support. But here's the thing. Like, yeah, there's a degree of air control, but Jayun has a huge economy. And with the additional gateways behind this, he can eventually just outproduce Oblivion. His natural expansion is just coming online. Some cannons being dropped, or sorry, some pylons being dropped at the edge. Oblivion going to try to get what he can. And honestly, this just feels kind of like a sacrificial bait for Jamie. He's like, yeah, go ahead and take those pylons out on the corner. I don't care. Now the Dragoon's starting to press forward. They are growing in sizable numbers to go ahead and deal with that threat. I'm not sure if range was finished in the midst of that or not. But now Oblivion down to 16 drones. He does have map control. He might be able to sneak another base, but jayun has got a really, really strong economy, so he's going to have to have something to come up with the follow-up that Jayun's going to throw at him. Plus one weapons is not that far from finishing. That's going to make those Dragoons even stronger against these Mutalists. And right now, Mutalists trade pretty well against Dragoons, but not in numbers this small. And right now, Jayun just has too much. Too much. That is eight versus five, and these guys are damaged. Oh, and one gets picked off for free right there. Natural expansion and emergency creep colony being dropped in an already beleaguered economy. 42 workers for Jane, so well saturated, he can stop the probe production here. He's already got a bunch of gateways behind this to follow it up. And there's gonna be an exposed overlord and some drones were hoping to grab that third. That's not gonna happen. Oblivion now in the red, still doesn't have a sunk colony on the front. Again, it's just Mutalus. The Zealot's not making the way across, so some Dragoons are dying. But this doesn't look like it's sufficient to defend. Sunk Colony taking free fire damage, plus one weapons is now online. The Dragoons microing back. The Zealot's now on top of the Sunk Colony. They've been cleaned up. It looks like Oblivion is going to hold here, but still not in the best position. Still doesn't have a second gas. This is a ever-growing amount of Dragoons, and there's more where that came from. It looks like Jayun doesn't want to let up on the break at all, dropping Citadel of the Dune to potentially get leg speed. The Mutalisk is going to move back out, but they don't have a lot of targets of opportunity here, and even the reinforcing Dragoons as they're plopping out of the gateways are potentially, I mean, four Dragoons versus four Mutalisks. Without a lot of micro, especially with plus one weapons, that's not going to be a winning fight. And actually, is there, yeah, plus one Carapace looks like it is going to finish. And some Mutalists actually taking fire. They're trying to cut off reinforcements, but yeah, finally grouped up. Oblivion scrambling. And right now, a huge supply lead for Jayun. Just in an absolute dominating position. He can go ahead and go for an inverted contain, not usually something you see happen to Zerg. He's going to go ahead and potentially grab that 12 o'clock base. It's just running back and forth, trying to engage these Mutalists so they can't squirt through. 
and make something happen, and Oblivion gonna GG right there, realizing he is absolutely overwhelmed. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Regardless, a tough match for Oblivion. Jayun, again, I think is gonna win this entire thing. Thanks for listening.